Hey everybody, I had so much footage from September that I decided to just put all the reviews in this video and the rest of the random stuff from September is in the other video. So if you just want book reviews, here you go. If not, go to the no book reviews included September vlog. Thank you. Hello everybody, it's Labor Day. Whoa. Um, yesterday I did finish reading The Dead Romantics and I am very pleased to announce that we got exactly what I wanted and not what I feared we were gonna get with this. I thought this was gonna be a sad, sad romance, but it's not. We got the happy and we got to relish in the happy, which made me even happier. So this went from being a three to a five in one short moment. <laughs> And then, well, no, it went to a three to a four in one short moment, and then it went to a five for giving me that relishing moment of it. So this is a story about a girl who is a ghostwriter um, for a very popular romance novelist, and she does not believe in romance anymore because she just, she a year ago uh, was horribly betrayed by the guy that she thought was the one and stuff, and. Um, then uh, is going to meet her editor, who is a different editor now, that she didn't know was being replaced, and uh, immediately has immediate attraction to him, for one, which is kind of like, okay, whatever, you allosexual person, you, fine. Um, <laughs> but uh, I uh, then, and she's trying to convince him that, you know, romance is dead and she doesn't want to write it and she can't write it she can't do it she can't get herself in the mind space for it so anyway but then her dad dies now her dad is a uh runs a mortuary and he is tragically passed now he she and her dad also have the ability to see ghosts um and this is why she left her small hometown uh 10 years ago and it's never been back and now she's back and it's a struggle because you know her dad's dead her siblings are kind of conflicting with her uh one in particular is and it's really hard to find it and then another ghost shows up the ghost of her editor she has not really like who who is uh become a ghost since she last saw him uh and now they're trying to figure out how, what he needs to move on and she thinks it's the manuscript that she can't finish um and they of course build a little bit of a uh you know a friendship and a, and, a, and uh, an attraction to each other, even though he's dead uh, so that's as much as I will tell you about this one. So <laughs> I don't want to spoil everything for you guys, but I really, really enjoy this. I was really scared because Ashley Poston uh, wrote the Geekerella uh, Once Upon a Con series that I really, really loved, and this is her endeavor into adult romance now, and I thought it did really, really well, and I'm really happy about this. This is one of the pre orders that I won during my Easter egg hunt. Um, and it's the first book that I finished. I'm sad how long it took me to get through it because it took me so many days because I was like, I don't want to go back to it if it's going to have this sad ending. And then it didn't. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So it's fine. Not on the TBR this month, but I finished it. Hi! Did you... Oh. It's back to destroy the towel time. Why well, have to go though, honey? I have to go help dad. And then we have a lot of stuff to do today. Once again, trying to get things done. So we're going to... Try to get our life together. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So I'm so really excited about this camera. We finished another book, though. We have finished reading another book, not on the TBR. Uh, that is A River Enchanted. So this is by Rebecca Ross. And I didn't realize this is the beginning of a series. I thought it was a standalone. And it's not. Ha! <sighs> At least it better not be with that ending. Um, it took me a little bit to get into this one but I ended up really, really liking it. So it's kind of a, I guess, Scottish-based fantasy and dealing with these two clans, the Tamerlanes and the Breckens. And we're all in Tamerlane territory for this, this whole story. It's all about Tamerlanes. And we have multiple POVs in this. We have um, Jack, who had left to study music and stuff. He left to the mainland. And he is summoned back by... The Laird. Why did you go down the floor? Why? Why for? Why for? Why did you? Why? You know how to get to the places you want to go. Where are you going? Where are we? Where are we being? Are you just hiding behind me? Peekaboo! <laughs> what are we doing? What's our plan? Anyway. 
Jack Tamerlane. Uh, so he's also a bastard. Um, oh no. Is this what, okay, there we go. I was worried about the fuck. It is on autofocus right now, so I might need to take it off that at some point too. I'm getting used to the camera, leave me alone. Um, so anyway, yeah, he comes back, he uh, is studying, he does the harp, that's why there is a lovely harp on this, but he does musica, and uh, finds that he was actually not summoned by the Laird, but by his daughter, the heiress, who is also an old rival of his. They call each other, uh, or she calls him her old menace. Uh, so there's a bit of that the tension of that there uh, and then we have uh, so we also have Adira who is the the, the Laird's uh, heiress the daughter um, who's kind of ruling all already handling a lot of stuff because her dad's not not doing so hot um, and then we have Sidra and Torin. so Torin is like the captain of the guard kind of guy um, no one crosses into Tamerlane territory without him knowing kind of thing I, th I don't know if there's like a magic behind that this is very it's fantasy but it's more magical realism like a historical magical realism um is what this more so felt like um because this plan they they talk about the folk and they think that the folk are kidnapping their their daughters so there are a lot of girls little girls going missing and they're trying to figure out why why the folk are taking them or if if it is the folk taking them and in order to communicate with the folk um jack has to play play for them and uh, to gain their attention so they he plays for the folk of water and then the folk of the earth and 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 all the folk until we get to the folk of the air and because they're the most powerful ones everybody the other folk is sealed um just to figure out where these girls are at and also a plentitude plentitude plentiful supply and multitude <laughs> of other secrets um that are being revealed in this and it was really really good um I, it just took a bit, a bit to set it up because i wasn't sure what i was going into i kind of forgot what this was about um i bought it back in march i think this was released in february this year and i i just completely forgot but now i know why i picked it up because damn it's good but it's very it's not lyrical prose but it's it's still very beautiful prose. It's a really beautiful, interesting world building with this because you're not, it's called the, it's, it's in the country of Cadence, um, which I think it's, it's just a fantasy Scotland. I think Scotland, um, based on, on stuff here that I was seeing. Or I, I don't know. The audiobook narrator sounded much more Scottish than Irish to me. And they had plaid. Plaid was a big thing for them. There's magic in it, so Jack's like mum is a weaver, so everybody, not everybody, but there was a lot of magic involvement in different things, in, in enchantment, what it could do, so there was a, a good limitation in the magic, which I really liked. Um, that's why it, it really felt more magical realism than straight up fantasy for this, so I'm going to say it's a historical magical realism. That's what I'm classifying this as, but I really, really liked it. I need to find out when this sequel is coming out. Actually, real quick while we're on a break is there a planned sequel right now because there better be there really better be i will be quite perturbed because <laughs> it does list it as one on here oh god a fire endless when oh it comes out this year it comes out in december Yo! Okay, 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 okay. So this is a duology, so this will finish. Okay. So now I feel like we're, no, we're, we're going to, we're gonna be in the West and the East for the sequel, so. Cause that ending, yo, yo, but like, okay, good. Just need to bump that up on the priorities. Uh, because I really like this. This was fantastic. I'm gonna give it 4.5. I'm taking the half star away just because of how long it kind of took me to get into this and kind of understand this world. It took a little bit more brain power than I was anticipating having to do. So, <laughs> uh, 4.5. Let's see if the sequel can bump it up to bump bump itself up to five, and then we'll have a, a five star duology. Uh, okay, I have to get back to work great we finished two books today finally finally getting through 
Uh, the first one we finished was a TBR pick, or TBR bag pick, and that was The Never Tilting World by Rin Chapeco. My first first Rin Chapeco book. I have not read The Bone Witch. Um, I, it took me a bit to kind of like, like when I was first reading it, I was like, okay, this is a standard story. I did end up really liking where it went. There is a sequel to it because I believe this is a duology. A duology, I do not own the rest of it, so I will have to find that. I do think I want to finish it. Um, the world building in it is a little complicated. I do have to suspend disbelief a little bit because science, but also it's fantasy, so who cares, <laughs> you know? Uh, but it does deal with um, this kind of fantasy world I originally pegged this as sci-fi, but it's really not. It's really a fantasy. Um, it's just the fact that the earth, the, the, the world in it, not the earth itself, but the world in it um, has stopped rotating and has been split in two with a scorched, horrible desert side and a cold, frozen dark side. Um, and that's because of this ritual that went awry many moons ago and and now we have these two separate, uh, unbeknownst to them, sisters on two sides of the world trying to heal the, the whole planet, basically. Um, and going on this big epic journey, there's magic involved in it, there's a lot of things in it, there is a, um, there's a female-female romance in this as well, um, as well as a female-male romance in it, and I, and it has a very good complicated, um, heroine, for one. We kind of have one of the sisters kinds of goes down this very dark path. And I really liked that. I always like kind of seeing the descent into madness kind of thing. Um, and I thought that was very interesting. It does leave us a little bit on a cliffhanger. I mean, it needs to because it's duology. So, but I did think it still wrapped up like this first arc very well. Um, it's very complicated. And I think I, I like this one. I'm probably giving it like 3.5, 3.75. Not necessarily a four because I've already started to kind of, it's, some of it's already started to kind of fade from my, my memory at this point, but it's enough that I'm like, yeah, I do want to finish this duology and see how this all works out. Um, so yeah, there's that one. Woohoo. And then we finished the, what we had was the live stream pick wild card. And that is Oh, Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw. But it's taken me a while to get through this one. Um, not for any fault of its own. Just me not having time and setting aside time like I normally do at the beginning of this month. But I did really like this. I do still like Winterwood more than The Wicked Deep, I think. Um, both Winterwood and The Wicked Deep kind of have these tragic endings that I'm like, oh, I don't like the tragic ending, the sad endings and stuff. And I'm kind of, I'm more conflicted about the ending in this one than I am in Winterwood. Um, I'm just conflicted with where everything kind of leaves off. I didn't think it needed to do another thing with it. I didn't think we needed to go there. I think we could have left that one thing alone. It's a spoiler. It's a really bad spoiler and I'm not going to tell you guys it. But I, what I do credit Shea Earnshaw with is just beautiful writing. She creates this almost magical realism kind of fantasy. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a contemporary kind of mystery um, because we are in a town that kind of just accepts that this happens to them because 200 years ago, the Swan sisters were drowned. They were, they were murdered for witchcraft, even though they were not witches. Um, and so they've sought revenge on the town every summer uh, for... 200 years and they've killed three boys basically or they've killed multiple boys um each each sister inhabits the body of a girl on the shore and that girl then kills and does not remember doing this um but the girl kills somebody so then we have a newcomer into town and we're trying to figure out why is he in this town and i won't tell you why he's in this town but he and um penny who is our main character uh kind of get close and try to figure out who is inhabiting the Swan Sisters and how to stop the killings from happening kind of thing. Um, there's, it's very complicated. We have some really good twists in this. I did predict one of the twists, like the biggest twists of it. I was like, I knew this is what it was going to be, but it's fine because 
it works really well for this story and I liked it. I did like that twist, um, but I just, it's the ending for me. I'm just like, oh, that one bit of the ending. I'm like, oh, does it have to be that? Does it have to be that? Okay, I guess it has to be that. But I do still, I really like her writing style. So Shay Earnshaw just has a really, really great prose about her. Good job, Shay. Because my opinion is the most important one you could ever get, obviously. So there you go. All right. Finally got two books off of the TBR this month. I've been doing very bad with reading and also reading the books that I should be reading. Uh, I'm once again listening to an audiobook that's not on the TBR, but it's not gonna take me that long to get through it. So, and then we'll get back on track. We're gonna actually start reading our indie book because that's the only other kind of, not physical read, but only other one that's not really an audiobook. So we will start Stolen Enchantress tomorrow. <laughs> not tonight, I'm going to bed now because it's almost 11 p.m., um, but yeah. There's our first two books on the TBR done. Four books in total done so far this month. And that's it. That's all I've got for you. Sorry, my ear was really, really itchy there. Hello, everybody. It is September 13th. And I have just finished reading one of the most emotionally charged books that I've read in a long time. And that is All My Rage by Saba Tahir. This is Saba Tahir's brand new book. It's her contemporary um, you may know something to hear from An Ember in the Ashes, which is literally right behind me on the shelf here. <laughs> right in there. Um, but this... Oh, this book heavy. This book real heavy. Uh, it is about a young, a girl and a boy, and there's, there's actually, there's three POVs in this and dual timeline. Um, so there is a Pakistani girl who has uh, immigrated to America after a, a really horrible earthquake. We don't see the earthquake or anything, we just know this as part of her history. Um, and she comes to America and, and learns English and uh, going to school and is living her life under the care of her uncle, who's her only living relative now because everybody pretty much died during the earthquake. And her best friend, Salahuddin, is uh, the son of a woman uh, who owns this motel. When they immigrated to America, they bought this uh, motel called the Clouds Rest in Motel. Um, but his mother is very, very sick um, and passes away from a kidney disease. Um, and this is kind of the catalyst of everything that goes wrong <laughs> in the story for this. It is very emotionally charged with topics of um, grief, racism, and domestic violence, drug use, a lot of very heavy, very real topics. Now normally those are kinds of, um, especially things with drug use and stuff are tropes and things that I don't like reading about. Um, it is very well done in this book. Um, I do know that Sabat here I believe said this is based off of her own experiences growing up living in the hotel um i need the or in, in a motel it is fiction but i don't know how much of it is really kind of based on her own reality as a teenager um i don't know i can't verify that um but the i mean i'm it's a, there's a reason this is called all my rage and boy did i feel the rage of these characters and well deservedly and i like there's so many moments in here where you're just so angry at the world around them. I'm a little bit angry at them sometimes for their their mistakes, but you know, these characters are flawed and they make mistakes and they pay for those con they 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 suffer the consequences of mistakes. Um uh, but so do other people who deserve so much worse. But reality is sometimes perpetrators of horrible things get away with it or they get off easy. And this book is so important. Guys, if you're gonna read any book <laughs> right now, I would pick up this book. I I don't really have the words to describe it because like, I'm giving it five stars. I have to. Is it a book that I necessarily want to go back and read again and again and again? No, because it is very 
it's so heavy like I'm surprised I'm not like crying my eyes out right now because of the emotional roller coaster I went on but maybe I just don't have a heart that's a possibility um, but I definitely this book moved me in so many ways and I just need everybody to read this and experience the true emotions that this book will make you go through and understanding a lot of things about the realities for a lot of people out there and it's just it's beautifully told it's beautifully written which is the same thing essentially but I did listen to the audiobook which I highly recommend because those voice actors are phenomenal um, at really bringing these characters to life and I just Oof, I, I need to like, I need to just sit and kind of process everything that went on and everything that this book made me feel, you know? So, highly recommend All My Rage by Sabah Tahir. Go read this one. Yep. This is why I don't like to read hard-hitting literary stuff because it makes me feel too many emotions and I don't want to feel those emotions right now, but I'm going to feel them anyway because I did it. So anyway, I'll get back onto the TBR. This was not on the TBR, but I'll, I'll eventually get back to it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It is, I don't even know, September 16th? 16th? What day is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have anything near me to tell me. Anyway, it's a day. It's Friday. I think it's the 16th. I want to say that. Anyway, uh, last night we finished listening to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The classic of the month. Very pretty cover. Dry as hell book. <laughs> So sorry. I really wanted to love this. I okay. This is another thing. It's suffering that the, that British narrator who reads it all very matter of factly without any emotion behind the characters. However, aside from that, there is so much science in this submarine science. Like we talk about pressure and stuff for so long, so many fathoms, so many leagues, so many points per, or like, like, there's a lot, I, I felt I was reading a textbook on, on the ocean depths for a while, even when we get to the parts where they're described in the fantastical creatures, I couldn't register them as fantastical creatures because it was just so dry. <laughs> it was so dry. <laughs> Even like, I was literally falling asleep by the end and that's like arguably the most exciting part. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. I tried so hard and I wanted to be a Jules Verdian lady, but I'm just, at least with this one, I'm not into it. We'll see about the other, other Verns that I have on my shelf. But yo, this was, it was so dry, but I, I do feel that a lot of the classics, the way that they're read on audiobook, whoever it is, it's usually a, a British person reading them, and there's very little emotion behind them. There's no acting, it's just reading. Um, or at least the acting they think is this kind of pompous, matter-of-fact British person tone. We must read every, like, like, here's, here's, I'm gonna read a little part. Let's read a little excerpt. We had finally arrived on the outskirts of the forest, surely one of the finest in Captain Nemo's immense domains. He regarded it as his own and had laid the same claim to it that in the first days of the world, the first men handed to the fair forest on land. Besides, who else could dispute his ownership of the underwater property? What other bolder prisoner would come, axe in hand, to clear away its dark underbrush? And it's just so matter of fact. That it loses, like, I would think we hear, like, the, besides, who else could dispute his ownership of the underwater property? What other bolder prisoner would come, axe in hand, to clear away its dark underbrush? Like, just a little bit more of a variation to the cadence would be nice. But it's all, all of it is read that way. And I just, I can't. I can't. I really, I really wanted to like this so bad, but I just, I didn't really. 
And I gave it three. Um, because while I, I like I have to give it three because like yeah, it is still I had to like separate myself from that narration in order to get into the meat of the book. And actually I found it really interesting because I've I've never read Twenty Thousand Leagues. I've never seen any adaptation. All I know about Twenty Thousand Leagues is the Nautilus, Captain Nemo, and the Disney Sea Ride. That's all that was my extensive knowledge. Um that yeah, that's all I had. So going into it, I was very blind. <laughs> Sorry, my battery died while I was doing that. But anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Um, but if I feel I probably would have liked it a lot more if I had physically read it. So I am going to give it three stars that way. I do still think even, even physically reading it, I would have been like, this is a lot of just textbook science right now. So... I mean, it's, it's, for the time that it was, like, the science behind it is pretty cool. So I'll give it, give it points for that. But otherwise, it's just what it is. It is what it is. But finish that. Huzzah! Classic is done for the month. Third book on the TBR is done for the month. I'm behind, but we're going to try to chug forward as well with a, another side project we're working on in terms of reading which you probably have already seen that if you've watched the latest videos from me, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this vlog comes out way later than videos I've previously done, so you'll see it. You've seen that there's a, another side project of uh, all the books that I, I got during like my first haul and my first pre-order egg hunt and stuff that I'm gonna try to prioritize now. So we're gonna try to do that this weekend a little bit. I'm gonna try to get through all of mine, all mine here. I've got these four, plus I'm still reading the indie book, so we will try to get through those as quickly as possible and then continue forward with the project, as well as the other books that have dropped in my Libby app. But, you know, we've got four months to do this. Three and a half. We'll see. All right, now that we've dealt with the egg situation, Still weird. Um, I'm gonna set you guys here tonight. No, is that a dumb idea? It kind of works. Okay. So anyway, hi. Uh, <laughs> we listened to a book in a day, but we listened to Magonia by Mar uh, Maria Devana Hadley. Um, yay! She's also the one who wrote uh, the translated Beowulf in the way that I, I read that last month. Last month. I don't know. I can't, time means nothing. I'm a grandmother now. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the book. I really liked this. Um, this was really popular, not super popular, but it, I, it was one of the first books that I remember seeing mentioned on booktube many years ago when I was first getting into booktube. And it's really interesting. It's kind of, a, I, w I thought it was like full on like a real sci-fi, but it's not. It's very fantasy. Um, it is about a girl who is very, very sick and but keeps hearing these voices from the sky calling to her. And it's a little bit of this, a little surreally. Um, and we have a dual POV here. So we have her and her best friend, um, uh, Jason. And so we get both sides of this after things happen to her. Um, actually, I think it's mentioned in here. Yeah. Yes, so it's mentioned in the blurb. So she dies, um, but then wakes up and she's in this world in the sky and he's still down on earth, not quite believing that she's dead. Cause she's not. Um, and there are, there's like secrets revealed and this magical world involving a lot of birds and stuff. So, you know, timely. <laughs> Me and my bird right now today. Um, but there is a sequel to this. Ooh, it got dark. Sorry. Uh, um, there is a sequel called Eerie, which is what I've owned for forever. I finally got Magonia this year because I bought Eerie without realizing it was the sequel to Magonia um, many years ago. So now we can actually read Eerie at some point. And uh, yeah, but I really, really liked it. I like the prose in it. I do like, um, I thought the characters were very interesting. And I, of course, loved the bird aspect. I liked this, it, it, like Neil Gaiman blurbs on the cover 
and I'm like, it does feel very Neil or Neil Gaiman. I always say Gaiman. I used to say it before I heard how his name was pronounced. Um, but it does feel like very a very Gaiman esque surreal urban not urban fantasy but surreal fantasy contemporary fantasy I would say um, with this this world in the sky and these bird people also there's there's two different types of of people uh, in that are running this whole thing and there's kind of like sky pirates so it's a little bit stardusty in that way uh, but it's it's very very interesting I don't really know how else to describe it especially with not giving away too much but I I really liked a lot of it I don't really have any complaints um, I probably am giving it probably four stars I would say because it did do some uh, a couple things that I was just like okay well, that's standard um, and I feel like it does feel very short because I mean I read it in a day um, and I feel like maybe this could have been a standalone if you combine Eerie because Eerie is also very short so maybe it didn't have to but it does end on a really good arc and a good cliffhanger to it not a full on like horrible cliffhanger but it does like complete the story I do really like what we do with her family in the end uh, which is not something that a lot of people do so I was very appreciative of that I'm sorry it's so vague but I like I don't want to spoil it because I do want people to read this book if you haven't it definitely deserves the hype that it got back in the past and I think it's one that we should still be talking about because it's very very interesting and I like it a lot so there's that there's Magonia yay another one off the TBR I'm trying we're trying we are going into the weekend of no one bother me and uh, hopefully we can get a lot of reading done this weekend that is kind of my goal is to do a lot of reading um, and stuff so Bye -bye. Hello. Um, I finished listening to Ink by Alice Broadway. Uh, I actually gave this four stars because it picked up. I was kind of feeling like it was going to do the usual thing, um, but it did some really good plot twists in here, and I really like how the ending went down. I really, I was actually quite surprised by it. I thought it was going to be generic, you know, dystopian fantasy. But, you know, it is pretty unique, and I really like the prose in it. There's a lot of really good, like, one-liner, uh, but, like, pretty lines. Not, like, jokes, but just some really good poetic moments that I thought were really beautiful. Obviously, the cover is gorgeous. Um, I really need to find the sequels. I've only ever seen the sequels in paperback, and I'm gonna need them to match, though. So there's that. Um, but, yeah, I, I thought the characters were very interesting you kind of weren't entirely sure of certain things I did I it was it was just really interesting all the all the twists that we took at the end here um and that really did it for me um <laughs> it really did it for me you know uh, but this was for a foil cover oh it's a sticker one too <gasps> let's let's do it then it's a sticker so hua reward let's see if i can do this with one hand Whoa. let's see what i got i got a pre-order yeah Ooh, what am i gonna pre-order there's a few things <laughs> i'm so excited about that Ooh, i want a pre-order i want a pre-order yeah okay cool fantastic thank you ink well done ink uh yeah highly recommend i think this one really went under the radar when it came out, I think this was a 2016 release, I want to say. Um, but yeah, very underrated, and I would really, really very much like to read the sequel. So, you stay. You do not uh, perish <laughs> amidst other series and things, but yay, we did it. Another book in a day. So anyway, hi, this morning I went out and uh, I got this shelf, and I got that shelf. It's not, I thought... Again, I I need to learn what the actual dimensions of these shelves are because I thought it was another one of these, but it's fine. It's enough for what we need right now because as you can tell, there's a bunch of double stacking going on here. Um, but Facebook Marketplace, man. That's why I write. Um, and then I have literally just been reading today. I did laundry too, though. I will say that. Um, I've been reading my indie book. I've been determined to, like 
do tasks to completion today. So I did have my spinner wheel and the first thing that I spun was Stolen Enchantress. Um, so I am reading that right now. I'm 70% done, so I'm getting close. It's like 1.30 right now. Um, but there's one thing about it that I feel very weird about and I kind of just wanted to like, blah. Um, there's, it's very uh, Stockholm-y, not Stockholm-y entirely, but like, the uh, concept. There, this is forest and young unmarried women get called into the forest. Nobody knows why, but they know that they think the forest curses the town and stuff and all this jazz. Um, you f and then uh, our main character goes in after her little sister who wanders into the woods and then meets um, a piper who is like convinced she's meant to be with him kind of thing. And later there are two other girls who also get taken into the forest. And it's very, like, it's a little Stockholm-y because they're like, you'll, you know, we're hoping you'll choose us to marry. And you're like, okay, what? But then you find out that this music that they're using literally kind of manipulates their emotions. And so I'm like, this is very strange because I know you're supposed to be rooting for this couple, but I'm very weirded out, but I'm also still trying to figure out the other issue with the previous guy that she thinks she's in love with, who I'm pretty sure is actually in love with her sister, but I that's unconfirmed as of this point, but I'm fairly certain because her sister betrays her at one point and has is pissy with her ever since she announced that she was engaged to this guy. And we had also found out that she was like making out with a dude in the shadows that nobody knew, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's this guy. So anyway, so I think that's how she's trying to wrap this up. But like, uh, there's also an emphasis on gender essentialism with this. And what I mean by that is that in the magic system, there is women's magic and there is men's magic. And there's a lot of this, like the whole reason that they're stealing women is because they don't have any more men being born or they don't have any more women being born. It's only boys. Yeah, there's just this essential. They're trying to bring back the women's magic and all the women's stuff is gone. And it's just all this women, men, women, men, women, men thing. And I'm like, mm. It's very essential to the story. The thing is, though, it's not poorly written. Like, our main character and other characters are rightly like, yo, this is wrong. What you've done is wrong. This is not okay. And he's agreed to, like, never... He's, he doesn't force himself on her. He does trick her into marrying him, kind of. Um, but he's like, well, we can just be friends. So it's like, he's chill and knows that this is, like, not a great thing but he has to do it, but it's like, there's so much justification that it's confusing me because I, he is like a nice guy. He is cool, like I do, I, I like some of it, but the, the, the agenda essentialism of it is kind of irking me. And then this whole like, yeah, straight on Stockholmer, let's go, you know? <laughs> Weird, because I'm fairly certain, I mean, they are end game in this, but the way that this is being presented. But again, I'm only 70% in, we'll see. We'll see how this actually, turns out how are you doing she's good today she's been doing okay she has not laid another egg she might still be in that boat for it but she's just been kind of chill today so but yeah so that's what i wanted to update you with what i'm doing we're gonna go try to finish still an enchantress now even though i kind of want to take a nap <laughs> 345 i've finished reading stolen enchantress we did it um i was right on a lot of things, <laughs> uh, especially on the thing with Bane. Uh, it's, it's, okay, so it was pitched to me as a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I can see it, I get it, uh, but it, that's very loose, very, very loose Beauty and the Beast retelling, and also Pied Piper. It's if you mix the two and then put it in its own setting, that's what this book is. I did still really like it. Um, I liked the, all of the characters, are complicated. Um, as much I don't, I really don't care for the whole women's magic, men's magic thing. That was, that's my part of it. Um, but the story itself, the way the characters grow, the layers of a lot of the characters, I'm like, okay, that was well done, um, and it was fine. I didn't like. I mean, I like. I guess it's fine where it ended. Um, I, it does make me want to read the sequel, so there is that. Um, yeah, it was good, but yeah, it's just those parts. Uh, I think some of it dragged a little bit. I think it didn't need to be as long as it was. So I think it could have been cut down, but I'm still gonna give it probably a four, 
3.5 to 4 stars. Um, leaning more towards 4 because I did really end up enjoying it. I did like how the the story ended up going. I don't have anything else. I just it was it was weird with the with the the gender essentialism there. Um, it was also this kind of press uh, pressing on the the need for the women to be virgins. It was like a virgin thing. However, we find out one of the girls is not a virgin. So, but she was still taken. So obviously, that just proves to you that virginity is just a concept, people. Um, but yeah, that was one of the one of the things I was like, hold on, because it would never take a married woman or a pregnant woman, or for some reason, there was also this emphasis on. Um, disabled women it wouldn't take them so it wouldn't take Maisie because she's crazy cause she's crazy Maisie and Nesha because she's a club foot which I don't think is true because Nesha and also in this culture uh, Nesha was not allowed to marry because she's disabled which is say that's taking something from history I don't think that's the the message the author was trying to portray um, that this is how it, it, it is with this magic um, I think it was just another kind of means of showing how the the bad men in their lives are abusing and controlling them because there's many of an abusive father in this story um and the trauma that these girls have gone through so i don't think it was necessarily the author like promoting or like agreeing with these statements i think this is just part of her world building and showing you the problems in it um no, oh, stay in focus. Um, you're supposed to be the good camera that stays in focus. Um, but yeah, so there's, it's kind of like up to you, read it and see how you feel about it. I, I get, I think I get what the author was trying to do. Not necessarily saying it was the best way to go about it. I did still enjoy many elements of the story and uh, it's intriguing enough for me that I would like to continue forward with it and see how we go to the next one. I think it is a four book series. Um, I don't know if it's complete, but I think it is. So there's that. So we've done a whole day of, of reading. I'm going to uh, spin the wheel and see what we work on next, but we're just chilling today. I'm having a day to myself, okay? I'm not putting pressure. We're just chillaxing. Let me do that <laughs> for once in my life. I'm letting myself do that. And reading a book all day long is one of those things. Even though I have a headache now from it because it was on my phone. And it's an ebook. Hi, everybody. September 19th. We finished this big baby. This beautiful baby. I don't know if I've ever really shown off the beautiful Jade Fired Gold. Jade Fire Gold. Thank you. I can say things. Um, I have been listening to this and. Almost, we're so close to finishing this baby. We're real close, but not gonna finish it tonight. Thought I might try, not gonna happen. So anyway, this baby right here. Why is everything is so like pink? <laughs> Am I just really red faced? I don't know, but that's fair. Um, and of course the lovely shadow of my hand. It's fine. Okay, so Jade Fire Gold. This was really, really awesome pretty pretty fun ride um the world has seven people in it <laughs> that's kind of how it felt uh as we're like making connections between um the two povs that are in this and it's really i really i did really like this i like the world building i like the mythology in it it's kind of a fictional china situation uh, we do have the legend of chang er which is the moon goddess thing which i'm just like is that like the theme of the year for all the Asian literature I've been reading? A lot of moon goddess uh, like legends. A lot of that. I've really just <laughs> been consuming a lot of the same legend. I don't know why, but I am. I don't mind it. But I'm kind of like, what is, what is happening? What's kind of, who decided this trend? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I did really like this. I'm confused though by the ending not like what does that mean but the fact that nowhere can I find that this is the beginning of a series or even a duology it is listed just as a standalone there is zero confirmation on if there's going to be another one but with that epilogue you're like 
uh yeah there should be an epilogue that there should or not an epilogue there should be a sequel with that big twist reveal at the end but there's no news about it so for now it's a standalone but it shouldn't be <laughs> because of that epilogue like if it didn't have that epilogue then yeah totally is its own thing this is it that's great perfect got a nice clean arc there uh but then you do that thing June CL10 what you doing what you doing with that ending I don't understand but overall I did really enjoy this I I, I knew immediately like when a character tells you don't trust anyone here you don't trust that person and well it still worked out okay but like that is just like such a line that I find that I'm like well not gonna trust you then if I was a protagonist, don't do that, you know. But I'm not a protagonist, apparently. Um, <laughs> no one's ever said that to me. Um, but yeah, I I did really, really like it. I think it is a, a pretty nice, it's not like amazingly epic story, but I mean, it, it's epic in its own way. It's not necessarily full five star for me, there were points where I was like, I drifted a little bit, so I wasn't fully enraptured by it at all times, but it's still four to 4.5 ish on this one. So I did really, really like it. I think it's just a great one. It's really nice. And I don't know, I don't have any other critique really about it. It's nice, it's good, it's fun. I'm terrible at praising books when I like them. Read it, it's good. I enjoyed it. I want to know if there's a sequel. That's my biggest gripe right now is, is there a sequel? Because of that epilogue. Hmm? Hmm? I think there should be. So, there's that. Um, it is 9.15 and I need to decide what to do for the rest of the night. I can either continue reading Gardens of Dawn or I can do video editing. I'm leaning towards just reading Guardians of Dawn. Hello everybody. It is September 22nd when we finished Husband Material. And sorry, sorry, I need to get in, into the light for this. Hi, we finished Husband Material. This is the sequel and conclusion uh, to the London Calling duology with the first one being Boyfriend Material, which I read earlier this year, I think in February, March, March. Uh, the card for this baby was, oh, it's another sticker card. Oh, we're gonna spin the wheel. But anyway, um, I did really, really like this. The thing I love about this duology is like, so a lot of people will compare this to Red, White, and Royal Blue, and I feel like that's only because they have similar styles of cover and it's a male-male romance. Other than that, they're very different. Um, and because in boyfriend material we have Luke and Oliver, it's a fake dating trope in the first one, um, and you know they catch feels and stuff. But it's very realistic with their own internal trauma and stuff. And so in the first one we do a lot with Luke and his problems with being betrayed by his former long-term boyfriend, being sold out to the media because he is the son of a big rock star um, who also like abandoned him as a kid. So he's got a lot of those kind of issues. And Oliver is like this, he's a barrister. He's a very logical, safe kind of guy who also has his own issues, but we don't explore that as much in boyfriend material as we do in husband material with this one. Um, and it's kind of their exploring what their future really means to them because it's two years later and all of their other friends like around them are getting married. Um, his ex-boyfriend who betrayed him also gets married in this and you know makes him come to the wedding and he gets married to a very James Charles-like character which I found is very interesting. Um, and then uh, it's you know them trying to figure out is, is marriage for them and, and going through stuff. The thing about this is I think I... I it abruptly ended for me and I wanted more. I wanted almost an epilogue of where do they end up after making this decision at the very end of the book. Um, so I'm like, is there going to be a third book? 
will there be something? I don't. I hope it's not something like father material because the whole thing about this is not doing heteronormative things and stuff, but I wonder what the third book could be if there is going to be one. As far as I know, there is no confirmed third book. Um, the one that's get listed on um, Goodreads is called The Amnesia Plot. Or no, it has a new title now, but it's, it's in this universe, but it's not a Luke and Oliver story. It's other characters. Um, so not an actual third book for this, but maybe that's, that's it. Maybe we'll just see them in that living their best lives. Who knows? I don't know. Um, I just kind of wish we could have done that a little more. There were a few times in this where I thought the, the constant spiraling almost into the same, uh, arguments was a bit much, but it also was realistic giving them and it's it's kind of a realistic approach to how like trauma just doesn't heal itself, okay? Especially when you're coming to terms with your own internalized issues. It's not a flip of the switch, you're done. So I felt that was very realistic in the portrayal of them. I do love that these two, uh, because unlike Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is very, very steamy and very spicy, this is not that at all. There are cute moments. There's a lot of fade to black, so we don't really have those kinds of, of things that a lot of people took from Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is kind of like, I feel like this is a superior story to it, but I do love Red, White, and Royal Blue. Don't get me wrong. It's one of my favorite books, but and because I love Red, White, and Royal Blue for the same thing. They go through these very human experiences in a very realistic way. And that's what I really like about this duology as well, is that we have this really beautiful relationship now, because we are an established relationship in this book. Um, and it's still them figuring out themselves and how their relationship works and what it means for themselves to change and go through things. And if it will, is this you know, the end of the relationship or can we do this together? Is this something I just work on myself? And it has a, it's just a really good examination of, you know, how to be, you know, in relationships and what it means to be going through changes yourself and how that will affect your partner. Um, and if it, and how it will affect yourself. And it's, it's just very, very good. And I really, really like how this is. So I will probably give this 4.5. I'm not going to give it five just because it did the thing at the end where it just, it cuts off. So you lose out on a half point for that. But there's that. Cool. Um, we have now done husband material. And that's actually the TBR for the month. So I can just read whatever I want. Um, I did just finish the painting, as you can see, I just cleared my table. Don't look at the thing there. Don't look at that other weird thing on the table. You saw nothing. Um, but we finished it. Yay! Looks okay. It's definitely one of, the, like, the paint by numbers are all things that it's like, you gotta look at it far away. Don't look at it close up, because close up, it's a big old mess. But I think it looks nice, and I put it in my bathroom, because uh, I don't have anywhere else to put it. So we're gonna quickly spin the reward wheel real quick. Let me get a light on to spin. I haven't actually done my pre-order yet, but it has been decided that we're gonna pre-order Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell, which is a sequel companion to Winter's Orbit, which I also loved. All right, here we go. Oh, I have a feeling I'm gonna knock it off. Oh, I didn't. What do we get? Veto a punishment. Veto a punishment it is. Cool. Almost got another pre-order. I was so close. If I just did it a little harder, could have double pre-ordered. All right. So, <laughs> veto a punishment, which I might need for next TBR game because we are dangerously close to another punishment for both the TBR bag, buzzword bag, the friend and family, and the rainbow. <laughs> we have two on each of those right now. So if I strike any of those, then I can veto a punishment if I remember to, because I never remember to do those things. Cool. Um, but yeah, for the rest of the month, I get to read whatever the hell I want. Not that I don't ever do that, but I don't have to feel the pressure to get the TBR done because the TBR is done. Aha! But I think we're going to go do some writing because I am behind, a little bit behind on writing right now, or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll reward myself and just chill. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna do stuff. That's what I'm gonna do. Bye. Hello, everybody. Uh, I It's about to start streaming time now. Oh, I also made the food decent. It was fine. Um, I just finished listening to Our Crooked Hearts. This is a very fancy 
beautiful copy of it despite the rabbits on the cover. I will forgive you. Uh, I really don't like the other cover though. This is a much better cover. Um, I really like this. It's great spooky read. If you need a spooky book right now, I highly recommend this. I'm giving it four stars because it did lose me a little tiny bit, but it's a dual timeline, very witchy book, mystery kind of thing going on. It's very, very, uh, very interesting, um, good spooky vibes. That's really all I have to say about it. It's got them sco that spooky, spooky witchy vibes. Um, very much like the the older timeline is very much the craft and the newer timeline is kind of more the mystery figuring out what happened in the past kind of situation um, and why the spooky things are happening now because of the events that happened in the past so if you like things like the craft you will probably like reading this book I don't know if I do I love this more than Hazelwood or not they're pretty equal in terms of how much I enjoyed them um, I, this is a standalone, by the way. Hazelwood is a duology. This one's a standalone. Um, and it works. It's perfectly good as a standalone. Um, but I really, really liked it. I, I liked how the magic was brought about. I liked the mystery behind it. I liked ev pretty much everything that went on. Um, it just didn't hold my attention the entire time, which is why I'm putting down to four stars. So I have to get to streaming, though. So this was a very, very quick review of our Crooked Hearts. Excuse you. Uh, but good book, yes, spooky, spooky time, spooky time, yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, still the 24th. It is currently almost 11 p.m. We finished stream, and we have just finished editing Sammy's wedding video, but we also finished listening to The Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo. This is a very short read. It literally takes me, took me an hour to read it. Um, I listened to it. It was narrated by Ben Barnes, and... Lauren something. I feel bad about not knowing that, but Ben Bonds. <laughs> um, the thing about this, not only is this a, you know, beautiful, beautiful book, it has absolutely beautiful stuff inside. There's beautiful artwork for each of the things. I just realized this is signed, like, to somebody, so to Maggie. Forever thankful stories brought us together, Nicole. <laughs> I got this off Pego Books, so that's why. That's how I got this so cheap. Um, but yeah, there's beautiful artwork in this. All the stories are, are very, very quick, but they all have good meaning and good little... It's a fun little expansion of the universe itself into the culture of the Grishaverse. So I did really enjoy this. If you need a really quick read, this is an excellent choice. I gave it four stars. It's, you know, short stories. Short stories aren't normally, you know, aren't really my thing for the most part, but um, for those of you who, you know, love the Grishaverse like I do, this is a nice little supplemental material. Um, to, you know, immerse yourself a little bit further into the world of the Grishaverse and everything that Lee Bardugo creates. Now, if only I could just get myself to read Rule of Wolves gotta do that but I have been reading more of Guardians of Dawn today as well but that is two more books done today and video done so I'm just gonna kind of watch the the whole shebang here um, it is 24 minutes and 43 seconds long um, the main part of it is the first three minutes because that's me using their song to do this little montage kind of thing and then the rest is a lot of just random footage, not random footage, but like performances done at the event. So um, I'm hoping that this is what she was looking for and wanted. Um, I was a little worried about it. I'm still worried about it, but it's Sammy, so she'll like it no matter what. That's in her nature, Not even to not even tell me what she does like about it. But I'll save all the footage in case she wants something changed or anything, but yeah. Got it done. Type to export it and, well, review it and then export it. Wikwa! What? <coughs> Hello. Oh, sorry. Backlit. <gasps> yes, ma'am. What do you have to say? <laughs> yes. Hello, everybody. It is September 29th. 
and we're scrambling. Um, well, the TBR is fine, but I did just finish reading a book, and that is The Book Eaters by Sunya Dean. And I just finished reading this one. It took me a bit to get through because I've been so busy that I've not been able to just listen to this audiobook, which it's a great, great audiobook. I did really like the narrator for this. Um, this was, it was a little bit different than what I thought it was going to be, but I, there's a little excerpt at the end of the audiobook that's a conversation with the author and the narrator, and, uh, talking about how this came to be, about how someone said you couldn't do vampires, um, new anymore, and she disagreed, and so I didn't actually really place that this is vampires, but I'm like, oh yeah, it totally is, um, but it's the book eaters and there's mind eaters on here. And so the mind eaters are more the vampire-esque um, situation. So it is about a woman um, who is a book eater and she has a son who ends up being a mind eater. Um, and it's very, very interesting, kind of magical realism is world and uh, very, very good for spooky season, I will say. This is a good spooky season book. So if you need one to do, it's not that long. Um, it's about a 13 hour audio book. Um, but again, I read at double speed and then actually the last like hour of it isn't, so it's really like a 12 hour one. Um, because if you're getting the audiobook version that has the interview at the end, it's a longer interview. But yeah, I really, really like this though. I'm going to give it four stars, I think. Um, cause I did feel at some points I was mostly just me because I just didn't have the time, um, or energy to put into it, but I really, really liked it. I thought it was great. Um, this was also one of the pre-orders that I won during my Easter egg hunt. So I'm happy to get to it and that it wasn't unworthy of that pre-order hunt. So always a good time when that happens. So the book eaters, yay! And I do still have one more book to finish um, that I'm in the middle of that I'd like to finish, but I also have to finish writing my short story. So we are going to be working on the short story tonight as much as I can. Um, we're going to work on stuff tomorrow as well, um, but today and tomorrow, the two tasks that I gotta get done are reading the arc that I'm reading and finishing that short story and word count, basically. And then we can start October nonsense. <laughs> yeah! Okay. Yes! Oh, we want to be in the window. Excuse me. <laughs>